that little you talk about could be huge for somebody. Yeah. But you move from Kesben to Wun to me yeah. with no uncertain terms. You yes. didn't really know how things were going to pan yes. out. And you didn't even know if Ebefa and Nase Emfa. Absolutely. And you were leaving a job which was really paying you and you were really settled for yes. it. Yes. Who inspired you? What was the motivation for you to want to move? Chema Wun to me himself. Chema Wun to me himself was the mo motivation. Yes. Hey guys, welcome to BTM Africa. My name is NY DJ. I'm very excited for today's interview because there's a lot going on. And my guest, obviously, you might have seen the name already, so you know who he is. His name is Colin Zatapoku. He's an astute sports journalist, of course, somebody who has so much passion for the sport. He is into a little bit of politics. We will be talking about that as well and so many other things that he does. And he joins me on BTM Africa. We have a lot of stories to tell. I mean, from way back, Capitol Radio, he was my colleague. We sat in the same office. I saw the passion. So it's, I'm, a, I'm a really excited to actually see him go that far and what he's doing today. So guys, welcome to BTM Africa. Just invite a friend to share as well as we talk about calling as a tapoku, the story from then and what's going on now. This is BTM Africa. Hey guys, so Atapoku is my guest. Nana, yeah. Charlie. Oh, but who is Dina? So it's a who this kind of teacher. I mean, entertainment for Sika Nene sports for Sika Nene. A main baby, ah. so Eja, my dog here. We didn't say no. Yeah, yeah, drink a crack. Yeah, it's it's been entertainment. Then it's eternal. Yeah, then it's seasonal. Really? Mm -hmm. I mean, you guys are making all the money, sports all the time. I mean, even when when eternal. there is, we don't have the Ebeka say. Uh, the season, like season break in the day, but there's still something to do, and yeah, you guys are always working. The, the, one of the things I think I've learned from this entertainment and following you closely is that mm. there is no break. <laughs> it's either it's a show somewhere, uh, the musician has issues with like celebrity yeah, issues, there are gossips, there are issues going on. There is a new release, mm. or there is a remix, or mm. there is a refix. Mm. Oh, look, I mean, come on. So, you think our industry is, but I'm going to move this kind of. I mean, that's where the money is when it comes to I, I, I Actually, I would have agreed. But when you look at the budget for the Ministry of Youth and Sports in this country, you know we are far behind. Behind? <laughs> <laughs> the okay. Ministry of Youth and Sports is only above Ministry of Chieftaincy. Can uh -huh. you imagine? Uh, Their well, budget is really like this. Oh, uh, really? <laughs> yeah. Mean, that, that has to do with the up, up, up there. But I mean, when you talk when it about down, where you guys... Then, there, I agree. Okay. So, there now I you agree. understand. Yes, I do. Okay, guys, so Atapoku is here. Now, I mean, let's, let's talk about the journey. The first time we spoke on this same channel, we spoke about, I mean, Atapoku, the journey from, I mean, family, school, growing up, and how he ended up at Capital Radio and all that. I want us to take the story from the Capital journey through to Metro FM, right? Yeah. And then you traveled outside, I came, came back. back, and you went to Boss yeah. FM. And you went to Kesben and then Wound to Me. Yeah. And the next, which we'll be talking about <laughs> shortly on this particular show. But one of the things that a lot of people have spoken about is, I mean, the move. I mean, why, why the move, particularly from Kesben FM to Wound to Me? Well, I mean, I wanted to set myself up as a specialist in something. Mm. When we moved to Kesben FM, they had a sports show, but it was ailing. It wasn't the topmost show in Kumasi. Mm. Then I think it was in Shire FM that had a top. Yeah, in Shire Power yes. Sports. I mean, it was everywhere. Mm. So we came in, we fixed it, and we started TV and radio combined in mm. Kumasi, or probably even in Ghana. I think that was the first time, in yeah. In Ghana. And then we got to the very top. The people I met there, after four years, I just felt that, look, I've really come into my elements now. I also belong because nobody knew me, literally, when I was joining Kespen. Mm. Achi was there. Jolaka himself was there. Miki was there. Sia Sia was there. Kwekwa Kwa was there. Um, Striker. Mm. We went with him. Jeffrey Asai. Yeah. And everybody was there. Look, so these were the big wigs. And these were the people I was listening to. So 
after testing myself and feeling that I had really come into my own, after four years, when I got the opportunity to move to Wun to me, the most difficult decision, the riskiest of them all that I've taken. Oh. Yeah, it was the Moving from Kesben to, to was the riskiest decision yeah. you've taken. When you say riskiest, what do you mean? I mean... I was so settled. You were doing so well. Mm. You go everywhere. It's Kesben Sports, Kesben Sports, Jolaka, Aktapoku. So I was up there. But I needed to test myself outside of my comfort zone to see mm -hmm. if it was going to work. So when Kinevan came up with the move, I said, let's go and do it. Wow. And then we knew we were going to be on probation for six months with very little motivation. Hold on. That little you talk about could be huge for somebody. Yeah. But you move from Kesben to Wound to Me yeah. with no uncertain terms. You yes. didn't really know how things were going to pan yes. out. And you didn't even know if Ebefa and Nase Enfa. Absolutely. And you were leaving a job which was really paying you and you were really settled for yes. it. Yes. Who inspired you? What was the motivation for you to want to move? Chema to me himself. Chema to me himself was the mo motivation? Yes. Why? <laughs> that name to me apparently has a meaning. Mm. And that it is that they always tell him he can't do it. Some was mean to me. Mm. I mean, me say, me me to me. Mm. So he gets it done. When you meet him, that's one of the first things he says. Whatever I want, I get. Mm. Another thing he says. And that no matter what, if I put myself to it, it will work. So having listened to that, I felt challenged. Mm. And to the glory of God, <laughs> it worked like magic. <laughs> we will talk about it working like magic at Wound to Me. But let's look at the Kesben story. I mean... All these great waiter people, like you said, you listen to growing up. I mean, the whole of Ghana, everybody knows all these names you mentioned. Yeah. You've, you had the opportunity to work with them, sat in the same studio for four years. You decided to move to own to me. What was the challenge, apart from you wanting to challenge yourself? Was it money? It wasn't money. No, I mean, people have said that challenge won't to me or cash. Yeah. I, I hear so being a car boot, chair yeah. on us, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you engage with me, one of the first things you get to understand with him is that we just don't limit ourselves to where we are. Mm. If you listen to his story very well, being a security man in the UK, coming back, going back to security work uh, with Biggie Supermarket and all, look. So I just felt that, look, okay, I get what you are trying to say. Let me test myself and see if this is going to work. If it works, this is what I'll get, isn't it? Oh, you won't get just that and even more. Mm. But let's see if it will work. Interesting. How difficult was it when he had to break the news to Kesben that Charlie it was very difficult. I need to move. It was very, very, especially Julaka, it was very difficult. I met Mr. Kaiser two times, had a conversation. He wasn't happy with it, but I was pushing for it. I told Julaka, he said, well, look, what you are doing is not good. Uh, you are at the forefront of what we do now, so why would you want to leave? When you leave, I would have to excuse. I said, look, I understand all these things, but let's, let, me, let me try this and see if it will work. Because you have a big name. You put me there, Joe Laka. You, you literally set me up mm. at the Kesben place. Mm. Everybody knows you. Are, it's your stardust yeah. that you sprinkled on me. So you let me go and try. If it doesn't work where I'm going, I've failed. If it works, it means even without you, I've been able to succeed. Mm. When I did that and it worked, he called and congratulated me. Oh, really? And we are constantly in touch. You still maintain a very good relationship with Kesben and the people there? I've even been on the show a number of times. Mm. Yes, I have meals with them Tuesdays before oh. I go to school. Oh, okay. Or I go to town with Madame when the car is not available. Mm. And then I, from on my way back, I'll go there with Baba Yara. Normally, he brings the food. Mm. We were eating together when I was there, so we would eat either at the main sports office or uh, at the uh, attachment there. Oh, okay. And then I'll go to school. So you still maintain that till date? Yes, till date. Oh, wow. I go there very often. Many, many a times people move from one network to the other and they bend the bridges. I mean, uh, they cut ties with everybody because certain things didn't go well. How was your situation with, with the owner of the station? Well, initially it was difficult. And I apologized to him again after I had left. I called him. And he said, well, but if this and other things were happening and you had told me earlier, maybe I could have also provided a perspective what for What was happening? Good. So now he felt that at some point I was isolated at the place when Stryker left. Hmm. Yeah, I think somebody had told him that. And I told him, no. 
The person I'm closest to among the group is Baba Yara, our producer. Mm. So the issue of striker leaving and people saying it's because I was close to him mainly. Yeah. But Jeffrey is still there. Joe Laka is still there. It's only one person from Who's the gone? clique that came from Boss that has left. So I don't feel that's the issue. And said, no, I genuinely feel that's the issue. But in reality, that wasn't the issue at all. Mm. No, 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 no. I just wanted to try something. See, Kinneben has strong numbers. Yeah. And he has the youth on lock. Mm -hmm. So I also have people who listen to me for certain reasons. Yeah. I wanted to try and see if you could fuse the two together. And it worked like magic. You spent four years at Kesben, yes. right? Yes. Now, people have suggested, or I mean, I read things online that seem to say that uh, you moved to Wound to Me, apart from all the benefits that parents were going to get for political expediency. How, how does that connect? How true is that? And he's the regional chairman of the ruling party. You are working for him, so if you really want to grow in politics, then you have to follow him, and then he's going to make a way for you. It, it, I mean, it just connects like that, even without putting yourself to it. So people are going to say that. And it's not like he just knew me as a sports person. He had actually researched about who I was, where I'm from, okay. who my parents were. Oh. So I had a conversation where he said, I heard your mom was an active member of the party in the Puno region. She was deputy regional men's organizer at some point. And I was surprised. So I said, yes. He had done his background yeah, check. checks. And my mom's dad was Buzia's advisor. Whoa. Yeah, so oh, everybody who knows me from the Puno region knows my mom, knows my dad, knows very well that this is where I belong, this is where I'm from. Mm. So, I mean, people seeing that, oh, You've gone to wound to me. It's literally like, uh, say, oh, I'm near Connie Dim or something. <laughs> <laughs> so I understand those who say that. But what people didn't know is that my relationship with politicians was tighter when I was at Kesben than now. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. A lot of the people that I got information from were in the government. Mm. My breakout moment was the Nyantechi case. Yeah. And then most of the information I got from the government side were from friends oh. who I was in the university with. I was a Tesco member at the university. Yeah. Everybody who knew me. I mean, you I mean, know you, this. You've, you've always been yeah. in this politics. Yeah. Perhaps a lot of people don't know. I mean, I made mention of the fact that way from SS, you I, were part. Like yeah, you know, for like the Hoa Shanti region, SRC, you were an executive. Yeah. When you went to tech, it was I mean, a you, you were a speaker of parliament. And so. you've moved on from there and all that. So obviously Sometimes the politics line is still people there. People didn't understand that. Nana Wache was my friend from the university. Yeah, Nana B. Yes, we all knew him there. Mm. There are a lot of people in government now who are our friends in the university. Mm -hmm. And we are still in touch with them. So when you meet them, it's going to happen. So yes, he's also helped me a lot mm. with his network. Okay. If I don't say that, I'll be lying. Mm. Chairman Tui's network has opened network doors for me that he had to I wouldn't have gotten. Mm. But so beyond the sports, there's that side yes. which you've actually benefited yes. as well. I, 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 now, I do understand that, and even per this conversation, you made mention of the fact that you're going to be on probation for six months. Yes. Without salary? Yes. Why? We wanted to prove to him. Prove what? I mean, you, you had done it already, so... And if you had stayed at Kesben, you're obviously going to perhaps get a pay rise, we're going to make all that money. So why did he decide to sacrifice for six months without salary? Sorry, these boys would have to... And everybody would have to understand the current world we are in. One thing that comes with big poaching fee is like transfer fee for footballers. No matter how good you are, you are judged by the money that is used to poach you. So your barometer is always the money you've invested in you and not what you are offering. Mm. So if I had taken the money then, oh, but you took money. So even if you are doing well, crap, but you took money. Mm. So we do so well. At the time, the station was not playing adverts. Mm -hmm. He's a strategic person. Now, after six months, his station has arrived. Wherever he goes, people are calling him. His colleague, regional chairman, people in the national executives, people all over Ghana, people are calling him, oh, your sports, they are doing well. Your sports, they are doing well. Your people, they are doing very well. It strikes him. Mm. Oh, these guys are really doing well. But he can't also come and tell you that, look, you yeah, are doing, you are doing so well. well. Yeah. So he, you are, he's... You are indebted. He's mm. indebted to us. To you, yeah. And he sees that. And he says it openly. Wuntumi is a different person from the one you see on TV. 
I think that that's characteristic of yeah. most most of yeah. the politicians so and other people. He, he comes know. around and then now he's full of praise for you. You've done well. So if you had taken the money earlier, we would have been judged with the money. Mm. Now, if he, it, I'm, he's judging me, he's judging me with the work I've done. You've done. Whatever we were supposed to get earlier is now in four or fivefold. <laughs> so I won. So that was your strategic. Yes, move. we won. Was it just you? Oh, or everybody, was... even Kenneben. People accuse him. They bought a house for him. They gave him money. No, everybody involved. So none of you took a password? No, no. Are you sure? More than sure. Because this is on record. And he might watch it. Are you not, are you not sure maybe one of the guys behind actually... No, 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 no. You couldn't go. The way he is. If anything about the sports happens, he'll go to Kineben and tell him that this is the situation. Tell to speak, speak to the guys. So if you have an issue, you'd have to go to the head and then the head will go to him. Mm. He yes. puts in their structures. Yes, he had, for the sports, that's how we dealt with these issues. No money. So for six months, you guys sacrificed your salaries. Yes. Were you not and giving maybe, I mean, TNT to or... To pushing you. Yes. Nothing you were giving the coupon of 500 cents for full. For every week? Mm, no. Every coupon month? It's like the Goyal coupon. Oh, okay, so, so, but that was for a month? Yeah. You are married, you have kids. Yes. How did your wife take that? I do other things. I didn't tell her. She found out after the six months. <laughs> This is to tell you that wives, husbands, and you be No, 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 absolutely. I mean, I mean, you cannot, you cannot tell them. You cannot tell them. Oh. Because where, where you, where you sit and see things, mm. she would see it differently. Yeah. And this wasn't emotional. Mm. This is between your mind and then your brain. You choose what. I chose what my brain was saying. It's not like you've not done this before. Put in the hard work. Look, but, look there, see, there are days that you'd have to be on the show from the beginning and then leave for Bechem for commentary. I was doing that. I've been to Samra Boy. Where haven't we been to Bibiani? We're everywhere. So we worked. I'm so proud of myself with what I achieved there. Mm. It's the biggest risk. Somebody sitting somewhere when you explain this dynamics yeah. to them will say you are stupid. I wasn't stupid. No, but you see, it doesn't make sense. It, it doesn't. For anybody to move out of your comfort zone. I mean, you are hailed. Everybody is, is mentioning your name all over the country. Yeah. I have people in Accra who is full of praise for you yeah. guys mentions you guys all the time and you say listen let's team up let's move to a new space yeah. a new territory nobody knows us let's go and conquer it let's prove a point yes it's daring it's risky but the rewards are there who came up with that idea is it you or Kineben or all of us <laughs> no who started it all I of mean us I mean, can, can even approach me about the project? Okay. We went there, we sat down with him, then we said, let's go. He said, look, if these things work, I'll transform your life. I said, yes. That's what Chema wanted to yes. say. So it had nothing to do with the regular salary that you get, oh, give me 10,000 a month, give me signing on fee, 500,000 Ghana cities. It's way away from that. That's way away from So that. the stories we read were all false. Oh, they were false. I Range Rover. I think we even laughed over one of them. That I took in 20 billion and range over my life. If you know me very well, you know I'm not a fan of these things. Yeah, I know. So. The money there, you'll be a fan by the cars and all no, those no, no, things. No, 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 I'm not a fan of those things. I want mobility. I want a grounded life. And luckily for me, I mean, we've worked. Mm. We had saved. Yeah. And thanks to God, I was doing other things like teaching and all that. So yeah. I had money to fall on. Wow. Reserves. So, guys, that is actually the Kes Bang story through Wound to Me and how it actually started. At Wound to Me TV and then radio. Now let's look at the life at Wound to Me. You guys started as a, as a team. I mean, imagine coming together and saying, "Listen, we are not taking money and all that." That that shows some form of unified mentality. You guys worked for four years. No, it's two years. Now. You worked for two years yes. at Wound to Me, yes. and for a moment, nobody was hearing from Atapoku. Yeah. And the next moment on radio, it is said that you have left. Yes. I mean, how? What happened? So every year I have resolutions. Mm. So from January, I started asking myself, what is the next plan? The next plan is to sign out of this radio thing with one last dance. Mm. Should it be where I am now? No. We are at the peak. If you check Wound to Me now, it's Wound to Me Sports now is like Kesben then. Yeah. You are at the peak. Well, the time difference are there anyway. Mm. Mm. Kesben is in the morning. That's a yeah. hugely competitive period. Yeah. But we are competing Mamma fear and Antina, <laughs> and we are still winning. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, so what would be done? If there's a one last dance, should it be there? Why not? 
Then what next? After then that I, last dance. I bow out peacefully, graciously. Then I'll now come in radio again as a resource person, coming to profess something, and then restrict myself to a full-time academic, either outside the country or here. Mm. Then I looked at it and I said, okay, fine. This one last dance thing is difficult. It's not so easy. So the one last dance, if it is going to be, let me disengage again. Whoa. I discussed with my wife and she was like, ah, are you going crazy or what? Mm -hmm. I spoke to some few friends, like, including Joe Laka anyway. Oh, good. <laughs> I was like, but you, you are mad. What is that? I mean, you're at a point when everything is <laughs> yes. up there. And I said, no, it's okay. Let me test myself one last time. What does, I mean, do you sleep? Do you dream? No, I, I, do I, any spirits talk to you? A lot. <laughs> A lot. Are they? a lot, a lot, a lot, the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Spirits from Doma or Holy what? Spirit. <laughs> because it's, it's crazy. Yes. I know it's, it's, it's often said that you often live when the applause are high yeah. and all that. But it's risky. Yeah, very and risky. that's what you keep doing. Very risky. Now, so see, we are doing so well. Mm -hmm. You can't write the story of Wuntumi Sports without me now. Yes, that's true. The tiny bit I offered. That's not would, tiny, though. I know you are trying to be <laughs> modest. Would, would forever be remembered. Mm. It's done. The race is run. So, who was I there? I was John the Baptist. You came to pave the way for others. Absolutely. So, you're not going back to home to me? No, 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 no. It's done. Oh, it's done. If I'm going back there, I'm a big man in town. I've been called to come and talk about something. <laughs> <laughs> and then I've been invited by my friends there. Mm. Now, come and join us one of these days because that's something I do regularly. Yeah. But I'm done. The race is run. What happened? What made you resign? So I, from, I, you, I, you just mentioned it, but yeah. I mean, what was that thing apart from the resolution that you so had? After the resolution, I started looking at where to go. Look, mm -hmm. anybody who followed the Champions League run, ran to Liverpool losing the Champions League from round of 16 to the final, mm. I've done some of my best punditry there. Mm. there. Read a lot, researched a lot, spoke to a lot of people before coming in. So something like Mbappe would sign a new contract mm -hmm. is because uh, Marcel, one of my colleagues back in Europe when I was in school, is now working for Qatar oh. uh, government and then he had inside, inside access. Yeah. So I was so sure on the TV that, look, he's going to renew. Mm. And then it came and then people were calling me, where did you get from? And I just laughed. <laughs> so, We've done some of our best jobs in recent times. Mm. And you live with that mark. Everybody is not happy. Chairman is not happy. I met him one Friday. He wasn't happy. The security man, gas man like this, he's down. Oh. The driver and a lot of my colleagues there, they are not happy. But look, this is it. But how come the announcement actually was broken on radio, sort of? I mean, it made people start having dollars too. Is there a challenge or something? Uh, I think they even added that for the period I'll be coming to help. Mm. So they had lived with it and then they felt that, look, it's better we take the lead with this before it's leaked from my end or probably outside and mm. then it becomes more rancor. It affects content yeah. and it affects positive energy yeah. at the workplace. So it means you were ready for it any day because, yes. I mean, just when the announcement went, a few minutes later, I saw your publication Ex exactly. online as well, announcing the fact so that you, you had you left. You give the company the leverage to cash in on that, mm. and then you take it up from your end. So on the Wednesday, I went there to thank everybody I worked with, everybody in the building, mm. hugged them, and some were crying and all that, and I said, Charlie, some other day, <laughs> some other day I'll come back as a big man. <laughs> Guys, you are watching BTM Africa. My guest, Collins Atapoku. I would love for you to subscribe, drop your comments. Who knows, I'm pretty sure it's going to go a long way to affect everybody else who is watching. He's left his mark at Wound to Me. Of course, he did that at Kesben, moved to Wound to Me. And now the question a lot of people are asking is, what next? A, a, lot, a lot is happening. In, in fact, if I had my way, I would have bowed out. Of radio completely. Entirely. Because eventually I would either fuse academics with corporate practice. Mm. I've resisted it for far too long. Uh, Dr. Sapon has been advising me, Dr. Barney, I call Dr. Patrick Ofori, these people, they've been speaking to me that, look, the radio is good. Mm. We know you are doing it so well, but at some point, you'd have to go back to your first love and then also add some corporate practice to what you do. Mm. And so I would have bowed out eventually. I think I would, but 
then you are there, <laughs> then you like I would say, so what's the next step? And then I'll start laughing. <laughs> well, I don't have any next step anyway, so. Oh, seriously. Because then what's up? And then he's like, oh, my friend, my friend, my friend. So <laughs> then I'll start laughing. But I, I want another project. You're on another project? Yeah, I want one. I want one, but. Uh, Am I tempted to say, I mean, I've read stories. I've, I've seen people say, um, you are going to, is this some pie yeah. FM? Uh, and that's also a new platform. Yeah. Now, with you having that track record of always wanting to start <laughs> something new and achieving something, yeah. is this something you're considering? Yes, I've spoken to them. If I say I've not spoken to them, I'll be a liar. Mm -hmm. I'm in constant touch with Bright and Pure FM. Bright can come yeah, with Because I was going there every Thursday. And anywhere OB is, when you, I'm <laughs> available, <laughs> it is my first port of call. I if have I a story with OB. <laughs> I'll share it one day. Focus <laughs> FM. <laughs> So we, we, we come from way back. We've been speaking. And then um, George Ardo and the multimedia guys too, we are in touch. So, oh. uh, so you yeah. could be moving to Accra yes, as well? Yes, all other things being equal, but I'm weighing them up. <laughs> I'm weighing them up. So as it stands... Yeah. I've not committed myself to any organization. You've not committed to no, any no, organization? It would have come out. You, you hear a lot of rumors and all that, but I've spoken to some power. I'm, I'm, I'm mulling over it. Mm. I'm mulling over it. So, guys, you heard it here first. He's, he's actually opened up. He says, listen, and today is 24th. Yeah, 24th. 24th of, yeah. Yeah, 24th of um, July. June, sorry. Yeah. 24th of June, 2020. 2022. Yeah. I don't know why I'm taking you back. <laughs> it's, it's exactly 1 o'clock, of, of course, as well. <laughs> and then Colin Zatapoku is actually saying that, listen, he admits he's spoken to a number of media houses, yeah. multimedia, ABN, that's pure, yes. with and Bright Kaka. one. And then Terra One, that's Sumpa. Terra yeah, One, that's so I've just been told well. we are rather 23rd. Oh, 23rd. Yeah. Okay. So, wow. Yeah. So I've spoken to them. If I'm staying in Kumasi, it's if it's either I'm at Sumpa or Pure. Mm. Mm. And if you are going to Accra, it's going to be Most multimedia, media. certainly. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Let's look at the political ambition. I mean, you've spoken about the fact that you might have to bow out of yeah. this whole radio thing at one point in time. Do you still have that? Ambition I do. of getting into it. I do. Eventually, I'll go in. Mm. It's a matter of time I'll be there. This is a prophecy. Oh. Yeah. Everybody who is closer to me knows it's a prophecy. I'll be there. I'll be there. But see, the way our politics is here, you must first and foremost accomplish yourself before you go in there. Mm. So if you are a politician and let's say you are no more a politician and you are out, what would you do? Ex Gasha. No, no, Ex Gasha <laughs> won't sustain you. <laughs> You have the money and then you go and invest in what? I want to be that guy that thought got to a level so high as an associate professor or full professor, went into politics, did his bit, service to public service, as we call it. Mm. And then if I'm no more a minister, MP, president, vice president or something, I should be able to go back to the classroom and teach. Mm. Yeah. You have that passion for teaching. It's my calling. Anybody who knows. I'm a better person in classroom than on any platform you ever meet me. Mm. If you enjoy, if you come to class, you'd enjoy it. When I posted on social media that I'll be having you on this particular interview, I mean, a number of people left messages. Um, some of them were talking <laughs> about your political ambition. Somebody said, listen, you are such an amazing lecturer and all that, Christian Service University. Yeah. And people came in with a lot of comments. I mean, a lot of them. And one of them actually came in, and it has to do with the sports. I mean, we moved into the politics, but yeah. I really need to take this because it's from somebody who has been in the industry for a long time. He's in Accra, mm -hmm. Nee Ashley. Nee Ashley is one amazing producer. And he says, at a time where majority of the highly educated ran away from spirituality in a supposed scientific football game, why does he always and boldly acknowledge spirituality in football? Well, you see, science is to aid us understand our environment better. Science always does that. Mm. But we live in a system an ecosystem, not just in Ghana, but the world over, mm. where you need to understand the reason for what happens. Mm -hmm. And it's not always that science explains that. Mm. I have a friend who is a medical doctor. He's a specialist, who is a Christian, who has had all the training. He was actually schooled in Germany. Mm. He's come back in Ghana. He's working, and then he goes on a patient, and then... That's everything, and then tells the patient, I've done everything science could do. I believe you should add prayer to this. And now these people, professionals, are saying that. But you think prayers don't work. No, they do. The human being is not just made of a physical body. 
is made up of the body, soul, and spirit. Yeah. The spirit plays an integral role in what we do. And we ought to let people understand that some of the things that happens in football are just not inexplicable, but one that you can attach normal signs to. The same place somebody will stand with the same quantity, when the ball is flying from the ground to the post, it's a goal. But yours, as soon as it takes off, then the wind blows a bit farther at it, and then it goes up the goalpost. Some of these things, you can't explain them. There is God, no matter what somebody says to mm. you, not everything that human mind has full control and grasp over. Interesting. So that's how come you still has attached spirituality yes, and to I, We ought to let our young ones especially mm. understand that the world is as much spiritual as it is physical. The world is as much spiritual as it is physical. Some of us are still doing what we do because of the prayers of our parents. Mm. And it's very important. You don't underestimate it. And in my understanding of spirituality, I don't usually even attach so much Christianity to it. I try to even find out what were people doing before Christianity. Mm -hmm. We pay tight. Yeah. The pastor is going to eat our money. They don't say chop our money. They say eat He's our going money. He's going to eat our money. Yeah. Spend money. Girl. Like, no, the pastor is going to eat our money. Dear Zika. Now, in the very ancient days, when the hunter goes to the bush mm. and comes with his first catch, he usually used to take it to the chief's palace. Now, yeah. Mm. That is one. So when you go and buy a pestle and mortar for the first time, the first cassava and plantain or cassava and coconut you put in, you don't use it for fufu, you throw it away. The Ashanti say that they power man, that they power drone. Mm. That is titan. In its own form. Christianity only brought a perspective, a tenth of it. You get it. Mm. So let's appreciate it. Our parents were taking the first fruit from their farms mm -hmm. to give to the needy or to the chief's palace to be given to people who are in need. So we ought to appreciate the spirituality of So that. we ought to appreciate the spirituality. I don't do spirit. anything without first praying into it. Hmm. Mm. Somebody is asking, it still has to do with radio. I know you've spoken about the fact that you might have to move out of it very soon. <laughs> but somebody is asking, when would you ever really move into a full English speaking platform? I mean, you are so good at that. But I think but for Capital Radio, almost all the other channels you've moved to are purely mass radio like P. It's difficult going into it full time. So what I do is that whatever engagement or contract I sign, I let you know that you would see my face and hear my voice on other networks. Mm. So I'll use that time for them. So I'm on CT, I'm on TV3, I'm on Joy, I'm on literally every English-speaking station that is willing to speak to me. Mm. And so full-time, I don't think we can do that, but on the fringes, yes. I'm sure this is somebody you know, one of your sons, Kelvin Uzu, and that says, how do you balance your spiritual and Christian faith with your physical and practical life? It's very difficult, huh? It's very, very difficult. Mm. Very, very difficult, but... You'd have to go to the radio and come to school and teach on a Thursday and Friday when you are fasting from Wednesday to Friday within that period. Mm. But you know very well that... Uh, there's a mission. There's a mission, so you have to do it. So Calvin is difficult, but I've just decided that this is the way my mom and dad taught me, and it has to be that way. We are about wrapping up, but um, there, is, there is something that's actually going on on social media. I mean, I woke up this morning to see, and there's been a lot of conversation around it and all that. You remember I asked you how it was when you left Wound to Me, whether you were cool with everybody and all that. There seemed to be an old video of an interview granted back in 2021. Yeah. And a portion is on social media that suggests that, I mean... You said that joining one to me was like, you know, and the confusion is all over. I think a few people have had a chance to watch the full video and they understand it better. But do you have a feeling that this could be the doing of some people who perhaps just want to instigate people against you? Yes, I have that feeling because if you watch that interview, you wouldn't arrive at that conclusion. And to deliberately take that spot, cut it out, and then share it like this is what is happening. I mean, there is a lot of positivity. That very statement is even a positive statement that yeah. has been misconstrued. Mm. So, I mean, what do you achieve from doing that? But it's painful. I have to accept the reality of life as a man. That has been said about me. When you watch the full video, 
it's the most inspiring interview you would watch in your entire life. I said this one probably. Mm -hmm. And then I, I would suggest that people should disregard it for what it is and then pick the salience in the full interview. I have absolutely no problem with Chairman Noon to me. If some people want to instigate a problem, it won't happen mm. because he's someone I'm closer to and speak to. Today, I've been speaking to people closer to him and himself all day, and then they watch the interview and then they are laughing. So I think he's What would make anybody want to do that? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's an interview from 2021. I yeah. mean, you spoke to my very own yeah. brother, Winfred. 2021. And that was us at the time you had just joined... I mean, you had joined... Yeah. Uh, I think after nine uh, months uh, or ten yeah. months, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And this comes up at a time when you had left the station, there are rumors that you are going somewhere else, and this comes up. And there would always be bad people around. Mm. It's, and it's not everybody that's going to like you. So it's bad people and people who just don't like you who would decide to do this. And I've accepted it. You'd have to be a lot careful. And also be consistently consistent in what you say. Because mm. if I had said something different in the original video, yeah. this would have been the end for mm. me, mm. for the present and for the possible future. future. But glory to God, when you watch the interview, there is a lot there to see that, look, somebody doesn't like this guy. That's why this thing is out. <sighs> I don't even know what to say, but... Um, so like he said, he just need to disregard that particular video for whatever reason and for why that is resurfacing at this particular time. And that portion, it could be clickbait. It could be somebody's interest to generate numbers and all that. But at the end of the day, if you want the full... And I'm particularly happy because I've seen a number of people counter it and say, listen, why put this particular portion out to instigate people against the person at a particular time when everybody is talking about him? and all that. So I, I actually agree to the fact that you say you need to be consistently consistent with what you say so that it doesn't come back to bite you. Because when you are lying, you'd have to lie here to suit NY. You'd have to go there and then lie to suit Nana Bonsu. But when you have to be consistent with the truth, it's one. Mm. You say that everywhere. And then no matter what happens, leave every workplace with a clean heart and a clear conscience mm. because you would go back there someday. Mm. You never know how life would find a way to take you back there. And then everybody who works, you know you have a confidentiality clause. Mm. So you, you are careful with that. I teach that. So I just couldn't fall foul of that. Interesting. Guys, my guest has been none other than Collins Atapuku, a family man. Of course, he doesn't joke with his Christian life. He's spoken about politics. He's spoken about, I mean, he into sports and possibly the next move and all there is to him. I'm really excited that he gave us this exclusive, very exclusive interview. And I mean, like I said, we share our story. The only thing is that now there's always Kachemi. <laughs> this is the very place we came to have our last meal together. <laughs> How is that even possible? No, sir, when I invite him, is a member. No, you were the special guest when I, I go here I together beg. with some pine. I beg. <laughs> <laughs> And Kwame Edinka was your MC. I mean, he was MCing you. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? Oh, they went to be sick and I didn't get cramp. So still, be a whole. You never heard I got gold bars and all that. I think that was one of the easiest things you could get from him to be. I know they be a whole. He teaches you how to fish. Eh. Uh, yes, that's the thing I like about him. He teaches you how to fish. Into a sight, Anna. No, no, that's not my passion. <laughs> That's not my passion. Then okay. People think he does illegal mining, but he says, no, I don't do illegal mining. I do small scale mining. mining. Now, you need to spend time with him. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. But I mean, what would you tell the people out there before I mean, we part ways for this particular Well, interview? thanks for the opportunity. Mm -hmm. It's been so good. I'm so happy with everybody. And this is the first time I'm speaking since I resigned. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, I've not spoken about anything. Since I resigned, we, we, we actually appreciate this. Yeah, this I is mean, the first time I'm speaking yeah, we out. Appreciate that. I appreciate I've not been on any media platform since I went off. Wow. Mm -mm, I've not. I've wow. not. So I've been home <laughs> thinking of myself and all that. So <laughs> I'm so happy for today. And thanks very much for the support mm. and the love, especially in the events of this morning and yeah. the things that I saw. I, <laughs> I was like, know, hey. Right? But the love has been good. Mm. I'm your brother. I'm a random guy who is chasing a dream, nothing much, nothing less. And please, as much as possible, hear no evil, see no evil, say no evil. That's right. Guys, 
It's been fun and it's been insightful having none other than Collins Atapoku with us here on BTM Africa. And I'm pretty sure you enjoyed it as well. Share as much as possible so that those who perhaps are also hearing the different things will get to hear the truth and spread that particular positivity as well. This has been BTM Africa. Let me say hi to Kusi, of course, to Nana Tutu and Baluchi and everybody who's been working in the back to make sure this becomes a possibility. My name is NYDJ. Catch you on the same channel some other time. Have a fantastic day.